good evening. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Amen. What a wonderful, wonderful week we are having. So many miracles that have happened this week. Healings have happened. Relationships have been restored. So many wonderful things that are happening here at Everlasting Covenant Congregation. Hi, I am Pastor Steve Heimbischner from Everlasting Covenant Congregation here in Billings, Montana, the capital of the world, and everything revolves around us. Well, it seems like it anyway. <laughs> but anyway, what a wonderful time we are about to have tonight. Last weekend, we were so elated at the number of people that, that were so encouraged with the messages that were given last week. And so we knew that the Father has something on his mind. And so we are elated, anticipating, and then we are enthusiastically awaiting for the presence of our King. Amen? Because I want to have an encounter. I want to see him. Amen? And so I want to hear his voice. I want to be able to, when I leave this place, I want to be able to tell somebody what happened. Amen? Amen. And so as we go proceed in our Arab Shabbat celebration tonight, you know, I just am praying, and I've been praying today, that every person would have something that the Father speak to them about. You know, these last few weeks, we've had numbers of, of people getting visions during the service and encouraging other people with those visions. And so we are just elated. We're, I mean, we are seeing so many wonderful things happen right before our eyes. <clears throat> and so with that, let's go ahead and stand. Amen. I want to, and for those on, that are watching by live stream tonight and those that will be watching by Channel 7, we want to introduce my drop dead gorgeous, most awesomest, wonderfulest wife. <laughs> and so, Pastor Evelyn, you know, I just want to tell you, I was awakened again this week to the enormity of how awesome you are. Oh, thank you. And how much my life revolves around you. And so, I just want to say thank you in front of the whole world today because. I know we're on in China tonight. Oh, yeah. And, yep, and so I know Australia's watching. I know people from California and stuff. So I just want to proclaim, I love you. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and let's pray. Amen. When you have eaten in our fold, then you, and you shall, shall bless Yahweh, Yahweh for the good land, land that he has given you. you. Blessed, Blessed are you, Yahweh Yeshua, Yeshua King, King of the universe, universe who provides the fruit of the earth for our use. We bless you for continually fulfilling your promise that while the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not fail. Teach us to remember that it is not by bread alone that we live. Grant us evermore to feed on him who is the true bread from heaven, Yeshua HaMashiach. Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, look in favor upon the homes of your people. Defend them against evil and supply all their needs according to the riches of your wonderful grace. Make them sanctuaries of peace, love, and joy. Help us to follow you in every step of our daily lives. And may we always abide under the shadow of your love. Through Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. It's time to pray for our children. Yes, and we have some. Oh, Amen. Is Rusty still here? Amen. Um, Matthew, would you be so kind as to go get him and see if he wants to pray? All Luna, right. come on up. It's time to pray. Come, Miss Luna. Let's pray. <laughs> hey, oh, not that way. This way. This way, maybe. Let's go this way. <laughs> this way. <laughs> she keeps. <laughs> All right, let's circle the wagons. <laughs> circle the children, yes. May Yahweh protect and defend you. May he always shield you from shame. May you come to be 
and Israel a shining name. May you be like Ruth and Ephraim. May you be deserving of praise. Strengthen them, Yahweh, and keep them from the stranger's way. May Yahweh bless you and grant you long life. May Yahweh make you good husbands and wives. May Yahweh protect and defend you. May Yahweh preserve you from pain. Stream them Yahweh. Maggie, 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 come here. Down here. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat 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 Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Hey. Shabbat shalom. Hey! Shabbat 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 shalom. Hey! Amen. Pray for your children. Men, if you'd stand with me, please. Amen. How do I know you can sense his presence? Amen. 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 Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above that of rubies. The heart of his husband safely trusts her, so will have no lack of gain. And she does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservant. She considers a field and buys it, and from her earnings she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hand to the distaff and her hands hold to the spindle. She extends her hands to the poor. Yes, she reaches out to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. 
Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, beauty is passing. But a woman who fears Yahweh, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen. Husbands, pray for your wife. Amen. All right. So we're going to pray a blessing over the husband. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the Torah of Yahweh. And in his Torah he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yield its fruit in its season, whose leaf does not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. Amen. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Wives, pray for your husband.
<clears throat> or his kingdom.
Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right, we have children that are ready to go and be with Pastor Tim. I think he's... <laughs> or is it Evelyn? No, oh, Pastor Tim. Amen. You know what a privilege to have such a man of God as Pastor Tim to be able to teach your children. Amen. You know, it's such a privilege and honor. Amen. And so, um, yes, and so I want to, Ryan, would you play that little thing you made last week, the introduction? And while he's doing that, if Pastor Deb wants to make her way up here. I want to show again and remind you to be praying for uh, the clip that we did for the Philippines. And Ryan put a, a introduction together for it. 
And so it's, it's absolutely incredible. And so I wanted to pray that because as we get ready to step into the feast days, and then Pastor Deb's going to go ahead and explain a handout that uh, she's prepared for us tonight. Amen? Yeah, do you want to play? Do you have that ready to play? Amen. Well, let's give Pastor T- Pastor Deb oh, Tim Tim. I have a name somewhere in there. <laughs> Tim Deb, they're interchangeable. That's so. right. We're one. So Don't anyway, worry. let's give Pastor Deb a big hand. Amen for coming Thank up. Thank you. <clears throat> I wish, kind of wish, Pastor Tim was up here with me because we've been working on this together. Um, <clears throat> um, the handout that you hope. Do you have your handout? You have a handout. Okay, it's called Hey LLC, Hey ELCC, it's time to prepare. And it is. Do you realize that the feast days are only two weeks from Monday? Whoa, yeah. Tell you, we're getting our party hats on. I was looking up here, you know, this looks like a party in here. There's there's tambourines and bells. I mean, I'm not I, I kid you not, there is some really cool, fun stuff up here. There's even holy cows that we can tip over and it's just (laughs) there's a party in this up here (laughs) so anyway I want to really encourage you this year um, as we get ready to go into the fall feast season as Pastor Evelyn and I were uh, working together on the calendar a, a rather interesting thing developed and that is that our congregational assemblies which are extremely important to be part of our congregational assemblies are taking place on the second night of the feast days. The first nights, you can celebrate at home with your families and your friends. So if you're not sure what to do on those feast nights, read this carefully. <laughs> because you're giving, be, being given a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the feasts at home this year. And those first nights are so important because they set the tone for the entire feast season. Yom Teruah, or the day of the shofars, uh, takes place at sunset on Monday night, September 6th. And that is the first opportunity for you to lead your, your family, your household, whatever that looks like, in welcoming and ushering in the beginning of the fall feast. Um, I put little notes in here. There's no way you can put everything on the fall feast in a handout. That's a book. (laughs) And I don't know, I think I might have one or two left back there that are on the fall feast. But um, really hone in on this. This is important in this season that we're in right now. Because we don't, we experienced last year when COVID hit and we had to shut down the church and everything and we had Passover and we were like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? How are we going to lead the congregation in Passover? You know, we shouldn't have to worry about that. Each of you, especially the men in this congregation, should know how to lead your family through the feast days. Congregation assembly is part of the feast days. When you go through this day by day, it will highlight the nights that you need to be here 
and not at home. We need to be together. But on the nights that you're at home, man, have some fun with this. Fall feast season is, is a time of rejoicing. It's when we prepare prophetically for the day when our bridegroom comes for us, when that shofar blasts and Yahweh tells Messiah, now, son, go get her. And Yom Kippur is a day where we stand under his covering, under the wedding hoopa, and the father proclaims, she is pure, she is ready, today is your wedding day. That's our covering that day. And the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Emmanuel, God is with us. That's our wedding feast. That's the wedding feast of the Lamb. And if, if you can't be happy during Sukkot, there is seriously something wrong with you. <laughs> seriously. I mean, and you know, I get, I get this a lot. I get people who come up to me and say, Pastor Deb, I don't know what to do. I, I, what if I'm doing it wrong? You know what? There's a list of four scriptures here that talk about what to do during the feast days. There are Yahweh's instructions. And on each of the three feasts of the fall season, there are, we, I put them in there for you to read. And it's very, very simple. It really is. I mean, you can have all the candles and the prayers and the blessings and the bread and the wine, and you can make this as complicated as you want to, or you can make it as simple as it really is. So take the time to read the scripture. And those are the things, those are the absolutely must-have must-dos. Because that's the king telling you, hey, on this night, I want you to blow the shofars. If you do not have a shofar at home, I see some that might be for sale back here. You might want to get one. Go online. There are recordings of shofars. Turn the volume up and hit play. But blow the shofar in your home. As a matter of fact, during this month that we're in right now, it's the month of Elul. And it is the month of preparing for the fall feast. It's a month of introspection, of making things right, of asking forgiveness and giving forgiveness and making restitution and getting everything ready for the fall feast. Getting your heart ready first. Because the feast days are about those two commandments. Love God with all your heart, all your being, all your resources, and love one another as you love yourselves. The feast days are all about relationship, folks our relationship with him and our relationship with each other. And you can't have that sitting at home by yourself. You can have a great time with God, but what about the other half of the story? Have some, invite friends over. Go visit those who are, who can't get out of the house. I'm thinking of people like Pastor Kay and Charlie and others that are homebound right now during the fall feast season. And you know what? They're calling and saying, we can't get out this year. What can we do at home? These are the kind of phone calls I get. <laughs> and this is why it's on my heart so heavy to help people so that when they, when they can't get out, when you can't get out, body of Christ, where are we? Can we not help? Can we not, hey, Kay, Charlie, hey, Rosie Beth, people who are stuck at home that are part of this congregation that would love to be here, what if we just showed up in the front yard and blew shofars for them on the day of shofars? Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be cool? We have to learn to minister to each other during the Feast of Tabernacles. Don't be so concerned about, am I getting it right or getting it wrong? That first, that Shabbat scene, if you've seen the chosen and Yeshua shows up at Mary Magdalene's house for, for Shabbat and she's so nervous and she's so afraid she's doing it wrong. And Yeshua just smiles at her, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. It's Shabbat, we're here, you're doing fine. Give yourself some grace and have some fun. You know, God made you in his image. Whether you believe it or not, there is some creativity in you. <laughs> there really is. So ask Holy Spirit to show you what to do, how to decorate. You know, I spoke to a woman a few days ago. She's going to have surgery during Sukkot. She's having a friend come in to take care of her while she recovers. 
and she, the feast, she loves the feast day so much, and she was like, I was thinking, how can I bless my friend and bless God when I know that I'm going to be laid up during the feast days? She's already got her entire house decorated on the inside to look like a sukkah. She can't do it outside. She knows that. But she's already prepared. I was blown away. I was like, man, that looks beautiful. I want to come stay at your house. <laughs> so get creative. Have fun with the feast days. You know, it's, this is the time of year, the one time of the year where it is literally commanded by our Father, rejoice. No matter what's going on, rejoice. Oh, and Sukkot. How do I build a sukkah? You know, sukkah, translation, temporary dwelling place. Now, I have dear friends that live in Israel. It's 90 degrees there in September. Putting up a tent outside, sleeping outside, not a big deal. I checked the forecast. It'll be the 70s here, 40s at night. I can do the daytime. The nighttime thing, mm -hmm. I'm getting old. I'm not sure I want to sleep out. <laughs> I don't do winter camping anymore. I just don't. But if sukkah means temporary dwelling, and I don't want to be caught up in the legalism of it has to have this many sides and this kind of roof and this kind of fabric and so big and keep, I mean, that's great if you want to get legalistic. But I, God blessed us with a temporary dwelling place. We have this little 1975 camper that we've remodeled. This year, we're camping out in the front yard. Are we gonna have a sukkah? Yeah, we're gonna set up our gazebo and decorate it like we usually do, but we're staying in our temporary dwelling for the week. I can hardly wait, it's gonna be so much fun, I think. <laughs> Either that or we're gonna be bumping into each other all week long and drive each other crazy, but we'll find out. Anyway, have fun with it. Ask Yahweh to show you, what does this look like in my house? And if you do have questions that Pastor and Evelyn or Tim and I can help you with, don't hesitate to ask. Let's have fun. Let's rejoice together. Let's spend time hearing from God. Tune your ear, tune your heart, tune your whole being. Because that song we sang, Come, now is the time to worship. Welcome to the feast days. Let's have a big hand, amen? Amen. That's what it's about, you know, and the, the feast days, especially the fall feast days, are such amazing time because what are you doing with them? Rehearsing. What you're doing is to re practicing for your wedding day with the king. And that's what it's all about. And so we just want to thank <clears throat> Pastor Deb for helping all of us because it's just a major celebration during the Feast of Tabernacles, we will, it looks like Crow Fair out here. Because <laughs> we have the sukkahs put up, we have temporary dwellings, we have a, the old typical manger thing scene signed up, and we have a teepee in the parking lot. And so only teepee in the whole region will be during that time, and so what a wonderful time it will be. We have some guests that just showed up, <clears throat> and so we want to ask and see if they would um, introduce themselves. Let's just say we want to get the microphone. Hello, hello. All right. Now this is, oh, okay. This is Miss Nancy. Did I get that right? And she's a friend of Mike's. Amen. Amen. And do we know these, uh, han this handsome family back here? Do you want to introduce them? What? Do you know this handsome family back here? No. No? <laughs> well, how about you introduce yourself then? Vincent. Hi, Vincent. Vincent. How are you doing? Today? Good. My name is Valerie Horsechief. I'm a minister in the, for the Crow tribe. Yay. Amen. Amen. Micah. This is Micah. Amen. Amen. Get, did we get everybody? Well, you are all welcomed and honored in this house. Amen. Amen. Okay, Ryan, you want to bring up the announcements that we have? Amen. Amen. 
love it when new people come, and we're honored that you're with us tonight. Thank you for coming. Amen. Amen. We've got some announcements that uh, we're going to just go through with you for a moment, and then we're going to jump right into our message. Not yet. Just the announcements. <clears throat> Charisma Magazine. And then Tuesday night, the Rock the Road, the Rabbi. Amen. 